Hey shooters, this is John with Sun and Shadow, where we build tools for competitors and warriors. On this episode, we are talking about some amazing results that we had with the tuner brake from Cortina Precision. We worked through the settings on the tuner brake to, uh, to get us some better precision. And man, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed with the results. Now, if you're curious how the CC tuner works, it's actually pretty simple. Um, again, I've never actually used a tuner before. This is my first time uh, experiencing one. Um, but this one here is a, a pretty slick setup. Number one, uh, it is a self-timing brake. So it's got this jam nut here on the back. Uh, you do not need shims in order to time the brake. You can just do all the timing here with the uh, rear jam nut. And at the very front here, we have this tuner device. And what we're doing is uh, we're just kind of moving this weight in and out on the barrel in order to help adjust the harmonics of the barrel and kind of tune them to each load that we have. And you can see that we've got, um, it's actually marked to zero through nine on this, uh, this scale here. And what we're doing is every time uh, we are setting up a new load, we are moving these in increments of one. And that's what I did at least. Uh, so there's one, there's two, there's three, and what we're doing is we're shooting a group at zero, then we're shooting a group at one, then we're shooting a group at two, all the way until we get to nine, and then we can pick, you know, which is the best group. Um, so that's what I ended up doing here. It's, it's kind of like doing a ladder test, except we're doing it with a tuner instead. And as you can see, uh, as I move this adjustment, you can see that the gap uh, between the weight and the muzzle device um, gets a little bit wider every time we turn, right? Um, so you can actually tune this uh, quite a bit and get this tuner to work for your particular load. And then uh, there's also some set screws here. There's actually three of them going all the way around the weight. And once you find a setting or move to the next setting, you just tighten these set screws in and that holds the, uh, the, the weight in place. First, let's get a baseline. We're going to do a little bit of a data dump here so we can see where we were. This is from a month ago with this gun. And then we're going to talk about where we are now with the EC tuner. So uh, first of all, to set the data, I was using for all these groups, this Night Force 4 to 16 attacker. Um, it was mounted on two different guns. So over here on the left, I have my regular SR-15 LPR. I was shooting 5.56 five, at 77 grain. And then over on the right, I have the targets that are shooting the 108s, the factory 108s. And uh, that was out of my 6R LPR, right? So again, same day, two different guns, same optic. And these are the results that we got. The LPR is always has always been a sub-MOA gun for me. So this, this group right here is 10 shots at uh, 0.895 inches. So this is the expectation that we're looking for or better out of the six arc. Now, on the same day, again, same uh, optic, different gun, right? The SR-15 uh, LPR six arc, we're shooting 108s. The best group we got was 1.24 inches. And just, just for your reference here, I am shooting at a whole bunch of different cards and stuff here. Uh, I had a staple that I was using as the center aim point for this particular optic. So it was a really sharp target and we're still getting groups that are greater than uh, one MOA. So we're looking at 1.24 as our best. That is not typical. That's not what I've seen with this gun so far. Most of the groups that I've been getting have been here around 1.5 MOA. Um, you know, we, we've got one over here at 1.39 and another at 1.88, but the majority that I've seen have been around 1.5 MOA. Again, that's where we started with the gun. Um, no tuner or anything yet. So I'm only shooting 108s today. Uh, I do have some 105s with me, but uh, tuning the, the EC tuner is a little more time consuming and honestly, I'm not really into it today. Uh, so. We're just going to do the 108s today. Um, I had some pretty good results at settings two and three uh, on my gun, of course, and uh, we're going to continue working that node a little bit and we'll see if it works out for us. Uh, all right, so we've got the EC tuner set up and uh, I, I kind of shot these out of order, but I'm actually going through the different uh, settings on the tuner. So we've got zero, one um, over there, right there in the middle. I have two because I didn't verify my target before I started shooting. Uh, then we got three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, and nine. 
Uh, so those are the, the 10 settings on the EC tuner. And you can see uh, how the groups are looking. This is uh, setting zero when we started, moving over to one, looking okay. Um, interesting when we get into setting number two, uh, really closed up, and come back to over here to three. You can see setting three is also pretty, pretty good. Um, and then moving into four, we start to spread out. Five is decent. Uh, we'll be all right with that one. Um, six is okay, but it's still spreading out a little farther. Seven starts to spread. Eight really starts to spread. And nine grows pretty good. So it looks like this number two right here and this number three might be the sweet spot. So we're going to spend a little more time with those. So now we've switched over to the Vortex 1 to 10 on our latest range day. Uh, the reason that I've done that is because this is the configuration that I would be using for the Quantified Performance General Purpose Division. So this is the optic that I would expect to use there. Um, again, I want to level set. I have another 1 to 10 on my 556 Knights LPR uh, that we'll again use for comparison. So let's talk about results with both guns again. And once again, this is the same day. Um, this time it's two different optics. I have two different one to tens, uh, one on each gun. And to level set, we're looking at the 5.56 five, uh, LPR. This is 10 rounds. Um, I do have one flyer over here, so I've measured both uh, with the flyer and without the flyer. Uh, we have 0.73 without the flyer, which is this group here. And then we have 1.07 with the flyer. Um, still a pretty decent group for that gun. Um, now we move into uh, the results that I had with the various settings on the EC tuner. And I showed this uh, a little bit in, in the video already. So here the data is shown in a chart. And you can see that the best results were had on settings 0, 2, and 3. But it, it kind of looks like uh, around setting 2 and 3, we appear to have a good node there. So we're going to focus a little bit more on those settings there. I ended up on setting 2.5, which was right in between uh, the 2 and 3 setting that, that appeared to do pretty well for us in the first initial test. And as I noted before, we had flyers on two of these groups. Um, I can't really tell you if the flyer was me or if it was the ammo. Um, I feel like all my shots were good, but you know, who, who knows? Um, this group here measures 0.97 with the flyer and 0.3 for four rounds without the flyer. It's pretty darn good. On the next group, again, this is still the same setting. We're at setting 2.5 on the EC tuner. We're seeing a total group size of 1.49 without the flyer. Again, this is the four rounds right here. We're at 0.67. Is the flyer me? I don't know. And then finally, this is the last group that I shot. Um, I actually went back and reviewed my spotting scope video. The fifth round actually landed right there. Um, so we end up with a five round group at 0.61. Um, again, these are the factory 108s setting 2.5 on the EC tuner. And I was shooting with that Vortex 1 to 10. So as you can see in the video, we had some awesome results with the EC tuner break. Um, we, get, we went from basically a, a 1.5 MOA gun all the way down to maybe even a half MOA gun. More realistically, maybe a 0.6 to 0.75 MOA gun, which is awesome. This is exactly what we wanted. Uh, so really excited about the tuner break and, and how it can deliver match performance for us. Um, next up, we've got to solve the problem with reliability. Still having some issues there, getting this thing to cycle and, and do it effectively. Uh, so we'll look for that on the next episode about the 6ARC LPR. Thanks everybody for watching, and we will catch you on the next episode.